There are many reasons to look back at 2020, but this year is likely to be remembered for just one thing, the COVID-19 pandemic. The coronavirus continues to spread at speed. All of Italy is now on lockdown over the coronavirus. The spread of coronavirus in the US appears inevitable. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. How has the world responded to the pandemic? Let me ask you if you can write down which kind of mask okay. and protection do you wear in the intensive care unit and in the ward. At the early stage of the pandemic, Italy was the country hit hardest by COVID-19 in Europe. Doctors were eager to learn from China's experience. We are in the in January, Wuhan became the first epicenter of the pandemic. On January 23 at 10 a.m., one day before Chinese New Year's Eve, the city was locked down. The Chinese authorities have imposed a lockdown in the central city of Wuhan, where the coronavirus was first discovered. Other cities in Hubei province have also have major restrictions to their public transportation. Millions of people are in quarantine. It was a hard decision, but to prevent further spread of the virus, fast action was imperative. Doctors and nurses worked non-stop to save lives as Wuhan residents did their part to keep the city running. Their sacrifices were not in vain. And as we spoke to the people we were working with in Wuhan, they said, this is our duty. We have to protect the world from this disease. This and I just thought it's so important that we recognize that. And to the people of Wuhan, um, it is recognized that the world's in your debt. The drastic measures proved to be effective. The number of new patients in China continued to decrease. But a new challenge was ahead, as the country needed to prepare for a rise in imported cases. Viruses do not respect borders, and COVID-19 was unknown and with various ways of transmission. But China's experience meant other countries didn't have to start their battles from scratch without knowledge or understanding. This is a shared threat. We can only face it together and we can only overcome it together. A global public health problem needs an international solution. No one can stand alone. China understands this because China was once alone. In 2003, SARS broke out in China. First Guangdong and Beijing, then the world. There were over 8,000 confirmed cases and 774 deaths. At the time, China's public health system was still being built. The economy was growing rapidly, but the country had almost no experience in handling such a public health emergency. The authorities were slow to respond and the process of information exchange was frustrating, and the public wasn't fully aware of how to protect themselves from the deadly virus. I think the most important lesson China has learned from the SARS outbreak is that under the background of rapid economic development and globalization, there is no boundary for public health emergency, such as infectious disease outbreak. With the flow of people, it is easy for local uh, emergency to de develop into a national emergency or even a global emergency. So it is definitely necessary to detect the disease outbreak as early as possible. Walter Ian Lipkin, known as the virus hunter, was there to help China in 2003. When Zhao Fengxian, a Chinese researcher, invited him, he agreed on the spot. Seventeen years later, he came back, 
with the same commitment to help Chinese people. As an old friend, he has witnessed the progress China has made from SARS to COVID-19. I think China, she did draw a lesson from SARS 17 years ago. We have much better science now than we did then. We have more scientists, we have laboratories where people can study infectious diseases. Um, we have better diagnostic tools. China has learned the value of cooperation the hard way. That's why when other countries call for help, it doesn't hesitate to lend a hand. During the Ebola outbreak in 2014, China sent more than 1,200 medical staff and experts to the infected areas. They provided training to more than 13,000 local people in combating the virus. China is the first country that sent um, items to us even before the actual outbreak. COVID-19 is a new and much more challenging test, but unlike 17 years ago, the level of commitment has been unprecedented. China has been quick to share available information on the virus to the international community. This time, more people understand the fight requires a global, coordinated approach. Countries like Japan, South Korea, Russia and European Union members have donated much-needed medical supplies to China. Chinese expats across the world have donated resources to China through their personal connections. And when racism and prejudice against Asians rose, some angels decided to act. They are the Guardian Angels, a voluntary crime prevention group. We just began patrolling here and certainly alerting people that if anybody's harassing you, anybody's targeting you, anyone's thinking that you're a carrier because you're wearing a mask, they'll have to deal with us. When the cases outside China surged, it was China's responsibility to send experts to high-risk areas and share their knowledge. That Iran is doing. To help Iran, where healthcare infrastructure is limited, China sent a team of medical experts to assist the country in constructing a medical system sufficient for tackling the virus. Test kits, disinfectants and other supplies were shipped to Tehran by the Chinese government after hundreds of thousands of masks were marshaled by the China-Iran business community. When Japan's number began to spiral, China donated 5,000 sets of protective gear and 100,000 face masks to its island neighbor. As the old Chinese saying goes, all under heaven are of one family. Instead of hyping decoupling rhetoric, China has worked to unite the world with its actions. This is China's solution to the world, but shouldn't be only China's. Different countries have different political systems, it's true, but this doesn't alter the simple logic. The entire world is in the same boat, in the fight against the virus.